Hey guys, this is DFD, aka Dark Frozen Depths, and this is another little quick discussion video I got, but um, there's a few things I wanted to talk about, and kind of sorry about all the frequent videos lately, but um, I'm more or less trying to shovel some of these out before the Techo Showcon thing, because I'm not really going to be able to do this there, but anyways, I eventually will do a video on on the phantom weapons and and stuff and maybe update the one on soul weapons but i gotta point this out clear as day before i even get into any of those now first and foremost when it comes to using these soul weapons and and whatnot naturally of course you're going to have to have them equipped to the the proper soul and have them um use it as their main weapon otherwise it's just not going to have an effect that's obvious but the other thing that happens to be something very, very important is what effects you're going for. Because I have to say this right out the gate if you're only getting the weapons based on either HP or or the um, elemental attack, don't even bother. Because I will flat out say this there's other ways to get both of these things. Yes, even the elemental attack, because you don't necessarily have to get it on your weapon. Keep in mind, there's that dull ones, especially the 100% ones that can give you that. I mean, granted, more of it is good because you can get more damage output, but at the same time, that shouldn't be the deciding factor for a weapon, period. Now, what should be the deciding factor is the special effects they get, especially considering the fact that we're going to eventually get final break limits for the soul weapons, which, suppo which supposedly will unlock... Even higher tier souls than the ones we have, like Arthur, Shingen, Mordred, they're all legendary souls. Well, this is going to end up going even further than that. They're going to have another tier of them. They're going to rename the tiers too, I think. It's, the legendary is going to be renamed in the A tier. So, that's something to know. Gawain is going to end up being something like B tier, and then Lancelot's like C tier. But, um... Definitely pay very close attention to what the weapon effects are, and that's what can really determine or influence your decision on what soul weapon you really should go for. Because honestly, a lot of people will just flat out plainly say out the gate, get Shingen's weapon, or get Herc's weapon, or get Arthur's weapon. You don't necessarily have to go for damage. Especially considering the fact that some teams, if they go straight for damage, you're going to get their asses handed to them. I've already learned that with my fire team, and my thunder team still stuck in that rut. They are indeed very damage nuky teams, but if you don't have that HP, you won't survive long. You need at least 5 digit HP for all your teams, period. And maybe a healer, depending on the situation. But, the whole thing is, it's the effects that really draw the power of the um, soul weapons to their fullest potential. Like, for instance... I wouldn't dare get Arthur's soul weapon, which would make her damage nuking skill do more damage more often because it just lowers some cooldown on it. It doesn't even increase it. It's not something like, say, Solomon's weapon where it'll, it'll let one skill just go off multiple times. That's the whole thing with that. Now, when it comes to... um. When it comes to which weapon you really should go for, it's it's more or less dependent on your situation. That's the whole thing. And when I tend to look at things for my team builds and whatnot, I try to look for what I need most. That's why I end up getting a copy of Jones' weapon. I don't know if I'll advance it, but I got it for my fire team. Because, again, they can really use the HP. And then it has the added effect of, which is the main deciding factor... It will make Jones' damage cut ability go from 40 to 60%. So, that's something to know. Like, for instance, somebody might want um, Artanian and go for the sniper shot weapon. It's an, H it's an HP based one, but it makes sniper shot become a 30% attack and defense debuff. So, there's that. And I've been really grinding on this because I'm trying to level up a whole bunch of Hime now. But, um. Anyways, when it comes to these effects, be very careful because even though it's not too much of a waste of resources, it isn't too difficult to get a soul weapon once you get strong enough. 
the difficult part is how far you've invested in it. Because I'm even getting told by a few other characters, I mean, a few other players where I should focus on, say, Arthur or Shingen or somebody else for this team. Especially my white one in that case. I've already invested in the Herc weapon. I fully enhanced it. It's got plus 99, all that. I don't want to go through that crap again with another soul weapon for that team. That's why I put all my my chips in on that one. Not to mention my white team is exceedingly strong as is. I don't know why Belial's on this page. Oh, there's somebody I was looking for. The Willem, because for mixed element team, she's very good. Although in this situation, I'd love to see um, SSR Diablos if I ever found one. But that also kind of leads to another thing too. Phantom Element Weapons. Now, this can really influence your build as well, because keep in mind, it may be hard to get some of these weapons. I know almost no one will have the magical, um, the, um, I think it's called the Arcane Weapon, but it's like some, some little weird-looking swirly-type grail or something. It's not even an actual grail, it's just an equipable Phantom Weapon. Almost no one's going to have that one, because you need six arcane weapons, and that is very hard to get in any element. You probably will not get that without mixed element. I'm pretty sure. At least if you're a free player. If you're a paying player, then you might get lucky. You might pull multiple copies of crap in the um, gotcha. Even then, it's still very hard to get those arcane weapons. Like, for instance, I got um, Shamas' book, which counts an arcane weapon. It's like my only one for light. Period. And then you may have to dive into SR or even R territory to get get those effects too if you want to keep same elements. So that's something that can really influence your decision. It's like, I really want this Phantom weapon, but I may not have the weapon to get it. So, depending on the situation, you may actually want to dial back to an SR weapon since they gotten a lot more powerful. I mean, we just got a Vigor SR weapon. Some of the SR weapons come with dual effect, which will only really get a, them both small, but... It can be a very decent placeholder until you get something better. I'm not saying to get rid of the weapons you already had. I'm just saying to get SR weapons on the side just in case you want one of those effects. Because granted, I would gladly lose about roughly 5-10% to assault if it means I will end up getting a weapon that grants 30%. Because I'll get a profit of 20% assault. That's obvious. So that's something to really think about. But the other thing to really also know is that each Phantom Weapon really does have different effects and whatnot. Like, I know the Hammer is a very, very powerful one because it's like a 30% Assault. There's, um, I think the Lance was a very good one too. I think it was, it was a Burst and Ability Damage one. I could be wrong on that because I don't remember that one specifically. The Staff had Ascension and I do believe HP. So it also had, came with a defender. These phantom weapons are very good, but they're very rare. So that's something to know. And I've said it before, but you may not want to break limited immediately if you get two copies of the same weapon. Because I don't know if, if they compound on each other or not. Because think of it this way. Even if they don't, you can still break limited later. But I would still test that out, so you say you don't have a one-star hammer giving 30% assault, when you could have had two no-star hammers giving 60% assault. So, yeah. I wouldn't be so quick to do that if you get a duplicate. Because I don't know if anybody's confirmed it or not, so that's something to, to really pay attention to. And then also, like I said in previous other videos, there's multiple ways to get dam damage up now because we have so many dif different multipliers like Vigor and all that type of stuff. I'm not going to go over it again, but that does indeed influence some of the weapons as well, so that's something to really pay attention to. And some Phantom weapons do indeed have some factors like that. Like, I do believe there was a Phantom weapon that gave, um... I think there was a Phantom Weapon that gave Elemental Attack. I'm not fully sure or not. But yeah, that's something you absolutely have to pay attention to. So be very careful of that. And lastly is also, of course, 
like you obviously got to keep up on your idolins, keep up on your accessories and whatnot because those are always changing. Not to mention, at this point, I know for sure, I just don't know when it's been implemented. There is a favorite weapon thing and then also the matching element at Dolan's. What that does is give like a 10% increase of that that equipment piece towards that um Kamihime. So what I'm saying is if a Kamihime likes swords and you put a sword weapon, then while the other team's getting like say 2000 attack and 100 HP, that Kamihime that likes swords is getting 110 HP and 2200 attack. And it would be the same case with our doings when you match the elements. Because that's a major factor for that, too. And then, matching element our doings is obviously used for, say, Monogarmer, Anubis, the wind element, 120%, and eventually other ones in the future like that. All the best our doings are going to end up using that feature. At least when it comes to the raw elemental attack. So, that's something to know. But that's something you really have to factor in. And then honestly, this is the last thing I have to say because I've been seeing quite a bit of it going around. And I don't think it's intended in some of my comments, but I have seen it there too. But there has been a little bit of more or less, like there's nothing wrong with elitism because honestly... When you get some really powerful crap and all that, you can't help but feel like you've climbed up the ranks and whatnot. We've all been there. However, the thing I hate about it is when somebody gets so condescending and starts looking down on others. Like, for instance, this is no offense to the person. I'm not even going to mention who they are because I wouldn't even be able to pronounce their screen name anyways. But I've gotten a comment from them where they said my light team was still considered weak because it didn't have 150% assault. But they also said that their team, by DMM standards, would also be considered weak because they're not so powered up. Honestly, that's not the case. And that can easily be proven. Because, sure, the top players might have, like, say, 200% assault or 250% assault and then have, like, 250% in elemental attack and all this other type of crap, but... You don't have to be that strong. And holy crap, EA is about to die. I've never seen that happen in these. But, um, that's the thing. You don't have to be that strong. I say it all the time. What matters in the end is if you can clear the content or not. Now, if you want to get more powerful after that fact, there's nothing wrong with that either. Because obviously you'll want to clear it faster or have... Just be prepared for stuff in the future, because the game's constantly updating stuff. I mean, we just got two Ragnarok fights for the Catastrophes. We still need another four, which arguably could be harder than the ones we have right now. And then on top of that, there's going to be Guardian Angels, which is even further difficulty than that. And who's to say they won't add more? I mean, they keep adding stuff in the game where it's demanding you get more powerful, and also they give you more ways to get powerful. Because Lord knows what these um, new um, souls are going to end up doing, considering the fact that they're going to be even higher than the legendaries we got. And that's considering le legendaries can go in the mastery system. But, um, that's the thing. It's like, it's more or less, get as powerful as you want, but make sure you can still clear content. That's the best way to look at this type of game. Especially since this game is extremely RNG heavy. Like, there is so much randomness that I absolutely guarantee that you will never find two accounts that are exactly alike. You will never do that. Even even with the starting pools, it is extraordinarily hard to come across that situation. Like, I'd love to see somebody have pictures of, of when they set up a reroll or something, that they get the exact same roll process, where it's like, the same four weapons and the same six addons or something like that. And some of them can even come up with a plus value, which is still different. So it's like, I would love to see two of the same exact reroll, just to even start. So I know that as things progress and all that, it's harder and harder to even get the um, two accounts that match. 
Because they both have to start from the same point, and then they both have to advance the same way. But that's the whole thing. It's like, I could pull, get Soul, Sukiyomi, Lancelot, I mean, not Lancelot, um, Soul, Sukiyomi, um, and say, Konohono Sakuya. And I could have did that account, like, at the start of the game, do another one where it's, like, way later down the line, but, oh, hey, guess what? A whole bunch of events already passed, so one account's still just stuck behind the other. But, that's the whole thing. All that matters is that you clear the content. There's many ways to get stronger. You just have to work your own ways of getting there. And you can win with 50,000 HP like I've seen some dude have on his team. So be it. I don't even know how they got that high either. But um, if you can win with 400% in assault and elemental attack combined, do so. If you can win with, say... Your character's getting double and triple attack every freaking turn, and then you're able to burst, like, within every four turns, so be it. It's like, it doesn't matter how you do it, what matters is that you do it. Which is also why I have such a huge problem with the whole debate about Ching and Soul Weapon, too, because... That's something I'll cover later down the line, but it's like, there's both... There's both valid points to the whole thing on that one, so you really can't go wrong with either one. But, I don't know, that's just me. I'll go into more details about that, but some of you probably already know what I'm hinting at on, on that one. Especially since there's ways around other things, too. It's like, okay, for those that are using Provisional Forest, you already know, it's it burns out 50 bursts in order to give that three-turn buff to the team. But the problem is trying to get that 50 burst back so you can full burst with it. Well, little does people know, even if you don't full burst with it, if you can get at least four people to do it, you have no downside. Because a provisional force buff with four Kamihime bursting is still the same as without it. But all, all five characters do it. It's about the same amount of damage. It's been calculated before. I just forgot where I found that source, though. But the whole thing is trying to get that 50 burst back after you use that buff. In the case of my white team, I can instantly do that because I have Michael, who gives a 20% um, burst to the whole team. I got Herc, who gives herself 30 because of the axe. So there's all that. There's ways around it, if you really think, because at the very least, get Morgan. Morgan gives an EX skill that guarantees triple attack to any person you cast it on, so you can put it on your own soul and get that back in two turns guaranteed, because you'll get 60 off of that. So, that's something to know. But, that's the whole thing. It's just... You have to come up with ways with the workaround. If, say, you're dishing out a crap ton of damage and the boss is still killing you, get some defense. Or maybe get some debuffs on the boss. That's how I managed to solo the light catastrophe, because if I went with my office team, I wouldn't have any healers aside from, um, what's her name? I wouldn't have any healers aside from, from Tish Trya, and she's kind of horrible at it because she's like single target, full cure. But, she can only cast it every so often, and then on top of that, if she uses it on anybody other than herself, then it's going to be pretty detrimental. Because it siphons from her HP. But, it's like I'd have her, I would have Michael, I would have somebody that can debuff defense, maybe everybody that can debuff defense, which would include both Tsukiyomi and Artemis. And then, of course, I'm using Herc. It's like... That team is easily one of my best damaging teams, unless I try to get some serious work around. In which case, I'll probably put in Metatron or something like that. But the point is, like, I would not survive that fight at all. Like, I wouldn't even be able to solo it. But when I go in and actually just re rehash things, where it's like I got soul and got maybe another attack debuff, I managed to go through that fight without anybody dying. All of a sudden. That just proves my point. Just go 
just go about a multitude of ways. You'll figure it out eventually because, quite frankly, why I am relaying info about stuff that appears in a game or stuff that can do this or that that for all this type of things, it still may not apply to you. One obvious thing is what the events are throwing at us. It's like, okay, we did get a Vigor Water Weapon. We did get a whole bunch of Wind stuff. Cool. If those aren't your main teams and you have no no intentions of building those two two elements up, it won't even matter. Like, that's how I feel about Thunder right now. And I mean, I do have the workings of a decent water team, but my Thunder team is just more or less fucked unless I just pull very hard for them. Because currently they have the worst SSR ratio among all my teams, and then on top of that is the fact that the ones I got aren't even that great. I'm more or less better with some SR on the team, regardless of what I do. I could buff, I won't do it. I don't necessarily need to do the buff, but that's the whole thing. And then, the other thing that kind of kills me too is the fact that, oh, you gotta get strong enough to auto the fights. No, you really don't. Because first off, like I said, I hate auto ability battle, because it tends to throw stuff out of order. There's plenty of times where I did it in the current event where Severog would do her damage nuke and then buff herself. I freaking hate that. And then auto battle, quite frankly, if you're strong enough to use auto battle reliably, then you probably shouldn't even really worry about the content. Unless it's got something you want, you don't really need to bother with it. Like, for instance, if this didn't have that extremely high EXP rate, I wouldn't bother with this. I can auto-battle all of the storyline. There's no point in me doing it because it has nothing I want. I can auto-battle all of the, um, the raid bosses. At least when, um, comes to the disaster fights. I don't bother because they don't have anything I want. Because I can get all my, I can get all the stuff from those from the higher fights first off. And then on top of that, the gotcha is still throwing the other things. It's like, I may or may not have to grind for a little bit more more the materials for the raids, but even then, it's like, I can still just wait, pull gotcha more. I'm not exactly in a rush. But, all I gotta say is this. Regardless of how you do your setups and whatnot, just try to clear the content. If you fail to clear the content, you're doing something wrong. That's the unanimous decision about all that. So, it's like, if say if you go to an event, like an advent of fight, and you can't clear ultimate, then you're doing something wrong. You should be able to at least clear ultimate. Ragnarok's excusable unless you want some final break weapons, but you should be able to at least clear ultimate on the advent events. That's your first step. If you want my recommended order on trying to get more powerful, being able to clear ultimate on the advents is your first step, so you really need to build up your weapon grid and whatnot, because that's going to give you the bulk of your power. And you can easily do that from the raid battles I mentioned. But, that's the whole thing with that. I mean, hell, if you have to use our weapons from the gacha, go ahead, because at least they're giving 10%. No one should have no less than 100% assault unless you're just tossing in some defenders or something like that. That's your only excuse. But between Assault and Defender, you should always have a grand total of at least a 100% increase on both. There is no excuse. Because you get our weapons out the ass. And they are extraordinarily easy to build up. So it's like, once you start playing, you should at least get yourself to that point. Even if it has to be with our weapons. Now, preferably you want SR, and even better SSR, but... Just think, when you have that 100% assault, you're doing a lot more damage. Especially when combined with elemental attack. Because these guys aren't hitting for much of crap right now, because I got a mixed grid. That's, that's how much that affects you. This team has a second highest rating among all of them. With a 53,000 rating. And they do way less damage than any of the others. But that's, that's just how it is. But after you've gotten all that, built yourself up, reliably be able to clear ultimate on um, the advent events because you can also get some decent accessories at that point too. 
like a couple of SR ones and maybe some R ones. Because those are kind of selective. Then be able to clear Ragnarok and then eventually Guild Order and then eventually the Catastrophe fights. Once you're capable of clearing the Catastrophe fights, there really isn't anything else you need to do because from what I'm seeing, later stuff down the line doesn't make you too much more powerful than that. I mean, it, it does give you easier access to some of the more powerful stuff. Like, the, I think the Guardian Angel fights drop Phantom Weapons at a higher rate. And then on top of that, we'll eventually be able to trade for Phantom Weapons anyways. But, that's the whole thing with that. And then Tower, of course, will feed you SSR break limit items. I might actually get when the next time one shows up. Depending on what happens with Shamas' book. But that's the whole thing. It's like, at that point, you kind of don't need anything. The, the primary things you definitely need to be able to do is anything in Guild Order, anything in the Accessory Quest, and anything in the Events. Except for Tower. Except for Tower Event, because, you know, that's optional. I'd still try it, because you can still get some good stuff, but there you go. But that's just my recommendation on Get Stronger. After you're able to do all that, then have at it whatever you want to do. If you want to finally be able to soul a, a Guardian Angel fight, which is going to be higher than um, the raids we got right now, have at that one. It's possible. You need to be powerful as fuck, but it's possible. But that's the whole thing with that. But anyways, that's all for this video. I'm going to finish up on getting the ZXP boost because the day is about to switch over. I got like less than an hour left. But um, well, it did significant progress regardless. So the rest of the week now is to finish this off. But um, anyways, that's all for now. More of this is definitely coming soon because um... Of course, I'm going to keep playing this game as long as it's alive, because I've taken a liking to this game. I find it to be very fun. When I try to go out of my way to get more fucking powerful, then it gets annoying and stops being fun. So, I'm even getting annoyed at those comments. Please stop telling me to get stronger. I know how to get stronger, I just don't want to get stronger. Not to mention, I'm kind of picky about my methods, because I'll still go and find some stuff. It's like, I'm planning on some white weapons, I'll just wait till then. I don't want any pride weapons, I final break things, I prefer to final break, that's just how it is. But, that's the whole thing with that one. And, um, and honestly, when you do give suggestions to other people, for those of you out there that do that, you, ha you honestly do have to consider a few things. Like, the first thing you should be doing is asking what do they have? Because it helps if you give suggestions based on what they got. Because I I got asked about wind teams and dark teams and all that type of stuff. That's because that person had a whole bunch of different stuff built around them. And this is considering the fact that I'm a light main with a fire secondary. And to be quite honest, wind can be another secondary too. But that's just how it is. Like, keep two things in mind. One is that they're capable of clearing the content in question, and two is what they have anyways, considering the fact that somebody might go wind, and they need help building up their water team, because they're facing fire enemies that will just pretty much kill their wind team. But there are some things that are unanimous. I will flat out say this, if you're not using light or dark, you're going to need a second team. You will have to deal with elemental weakness otherwise. And trust me, it's not pretty on the higher content. Think it's bad getting nuked for like 8k? You'll get nuked for like 16, maybe 17k and probably be guaranteed to die if you face something with um a strength against your team. So you have to be very careful of that. But anyways, that's all for this, guys. Like I said, Mortis is going to come soon. And once again... Ultimately, a lot of things really do boil down to opinion. There is so much that boils down to opinion. And usually when it's not opinion, it's luck. Because, like I said, RNG, we all have got different accounts pretty much. But, I'm going to stop the video there. It's been like half an hour. So, that's all for now, guys. I'm going to finish this up. Take care.